Good morning and praise the Lord. We bring you greetings from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ this morning. It's glad to be in the house of God one more time. We want to hurry you up and we want to get into the atmosphere of praise. We want to hurry you up and move our spirits to the space of praise. Because we don't have all day, but we got this time to praise God. So I want everybody in their homes right now, and even before we move into prayer, I want you to get on your feet right now, and I want you to, I want you to change the atmosphere in home right now. And come on, I want you to get on your feet, and I want you to invite, invite the Spirit of God into your home. And I want you to clap your hands right now where you're at. Come on, we want to move the Spirit right now at home. We want to praise God right now at home. Come on, we want to magnify the name of Jesus right now. I know it's Father's Day, but it's the Lord's Day. Come on and move the spirit right now and let's praise God right now. Because he's worthy. 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 Come on and magnify the name of Jesus. Haven't the Lord been good to you? Have the Lord been good to you? If the Lord been good to you, then say yeah. Say yeah. Say yeah! Say yeah! Say yeah! Come on and praise the Lord this morning. It's Father's Day this morning, but it's the Lord's Day every morning. Come on and move the spirit at home right now. Get up out your seat and praise the Lord this morning because he's worthy. 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 Come on and praise him. All over the airways. God is worthy this morning. We magnify the name of Jesus on this morning. Come on and magnify the name of the Lord. I wanted to kind of move the spirit of God in quickly on this morning. Sometimes we drag, we drag into the spirit. But how many of you know that the spirit it is always willing and waiting for us to praise God? It is a privilege. It is an honor to come before a holy God. And God has been so good to us. And so we don't want to come to God. When you go before the king, you don't go before the king with a countenance that's not happy. You don't bring sadness to the king because the king is worthy of all the glory. He's worthy of all the praise. So we want to go to God in spite of our tribulations and we want to go to God with a heart of joy because he woke us up on this morning he started us on our way uh, he put a running in our feet a clapping in our hands and a shout of victory in our mouth uh, he gave us lips of praise to magnify oh magnify the bible says oh magnify oh magnify the lord on this morning so we want to come before the king this morning Father's Day, the father of all fathers. We want to acknowledge our Father God on this morning for the great job he has done in creating the human race. Even though we have not always been obedient unto the Father, even though the human race has always, has not always been committed to the father it has nothing to do with how great the father is i want to say happy father's day to every father who can hear me on this morning i say happy father's day to you and i also want to extend father's day to every mother who has been traveling this road with her family alone and there is no presence of a man, a father in the family, but somehow, somebody say on this morning, somehow, these mothers are making a way out of no way and they're taking care of these babies all by themselves. And these children are being fed and they're being guided with the absence of a man and a father in the home. So to every mother who has felt like she's been alone on this journey, I want you to know that the Father God has been with you. 
There has always been a father in the home. If you are a new creature in Christ Jesus, there has always been a father in the home. So to every mother who's by herself on this morning in the flesh, but present with the Lord and you're raising children, I say to you this morning, happy Father's Day even to you. Only the Lord, only the Lord can make a mother a father. Only the Lord, only the Lord can make a mother a father. And so I say happy Father's Day to you. I say happy Father's Day to all of the stepfathers who have children that they have raised and that they're raising that are not their biological children, but you love them unconditionally. You didn't have to, but God moved upon your heart and he gave you a heart of love that you did not see this child. But you saw him as your own. This child was not a stranger to you. You saw this child as your own and you loved him. You did the same thing that God did to the Gentiles. He loved us. He became our father. And he, and he engrafted us in that we would become sons and daughters of the Most High. So I'm grateful this morning. Not going to trouble you long because I want you to be able to spend some time with your family on today. I know that all of the mothers got the pots hot right now and the, the, the grills are warm and they're making these beautiful meals for their husbands and their, and their fathers. And I, I, I don't want to hold you long, but I want to encourage you in the Lord on this morning, if that's all right with you. Most heavenly and wise Father, our God, I come to you right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you for this day that was not promised, but because of your loving kindness, your tender mercies, dear God. You have allowed us to enter into your presence. And for that, we are grateful and we say thank you. Now, God, we ask that we would decrease, dear God, that the spirit in us would, would rise to be able to hear what the spirit is saying unto the church. God, we ask you, Lord God, to be with us and prepare a table before us, dear God, that we may be able to sit and eat spiritually, dear God. Dear God, we ask you to move out all distractions, dear God. Open our hearts, our minds, to be able to receive and accept the word. These things we ask in the sweet and precious name of the only begotten of the Father, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the church says, Amen. 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 God bless you all on this morning. I want you to turn your Bibles with me to the book of Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. You find here in Corinthians where the Apostle Paul wrote to the church at Corinth. This was his second letter to this church to set the church back in order. The church needs order on this morning. And so you find me here, chapter 5, verse 17 through 21 verses 17 through 21 and the word of God reads as thus therefore if any man be in Christ he is a new creature old things are passed away behold all things are become new and all things are of God who have reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and have given to us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and have committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's state, 
Be ye reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. And the church says, Amen. We agree, we agree to the word of God. You find me here in 2 Corinthians, where the Apostle Paul again was writing to the church at Corinth. For a brief topic on this morning, I want to use, I proclaim that I am new. I want to break that topic open. I proclaim to proclaim. To proclaim is to profess, to announce publicly, speak it, to announce publicly on this morning that I am, as you see in the topic, it should be parentheses there, that I am, I am being God, new. Why? Because God said so. God said this morning that I am new. I am, and I proclaim it. I publicly confess it this morning. I speak it into my existence that I am new this morning. On this morning, I speak that my mind is new. My heart is new. My life is new. My destiny is new. My spirit is new. My footsteps are new. My future is new. My intentions are new. Why? Because I'm new in God. I am said so because I am in Christ Jesus. I am new on this morning. I publicly confess this morning to every listening ear that I am new on this morning. When we begin to speak those things into existence in our life, understanding that being a child of God in Christ Jesus, it permits me and it gives me a liberty to be able to speak certain things into my life. It gives me the liberty to be able to speak into my mind, to be able to give my mind control over the things that that it once was a prisoner to. I can tra the Bible said that I have the power to transform my mind. I have the power because of Christ Jesus to change my mind. God said that I can speak these things over my heart, even though people have been hard against me, even though people have said things that broke my heart and it has caused me a little pain and it has discouraged me. God said that I have the power and the liberty because I'm in Christ Jesus to speak over my broken heart and to proclaim and to announce that my heart is no longer broken. Why? Because I am said that I have the power because I am said that I am a new creature in Christ Jesus and I understand that when old things are passed away that new things must come into place. Uh, I understand that when the old man is crucified that the new man must stand up and, and he must proclaim that I have a new heart I must proclaim the new man must proclaim that he have a new life I have that power in Christ Jesus I want to encourage somebody on this morning to let you know what what the devil don't want you to know that you have the power over your life you have the power over the mind. Again, the Bible said that you have the power to transform your mind and to change your mind. You have the power through the word of God to allow the word of God to heal your heart. And your life do not have to be the same no more. If your life has been a life of despair, if your life has been a life of hurt, if your life has been a life of pain, God said, listen, you are a child of God now. You are no longer in that tabernacle that is fractured. You are no longer in that space where there is no hope. You are now in Christ Jesus. You now sit in heavenly places. You have now become a citizen of the kingdom of God and you have obtained the rights to the citizens of the kingdom of God. Uh, you have dual citizenship. You have a citizenship here in the land which my favor and my glory is upon you and the favor that's upon you will follow you but you also have a citizenship that will allow you to move uh, from this earth uh, and to travel into heavenly places uh, and to allow the spirit of God to speak to you so proclaim and announce it on this morning that I am new on this morning my intentions become new 
I have no more intentions to, to, to sin anymore. My intentions are no longer to stand before a holy God and to sin before him. Because why? I am no longer a slave to my flesh anymore. I am no longer a slave to the demands of other folk over my life. I am no longer a slave to the universal guilt that is put on people every day that you must be this person and you must be that person. You must be this type of Christian. You shouldn't be that type of Christian. I'm not going to allow these spirits uh, that people carry with them to dictate my atmosphere because I understand that the Lord has given me power over my atmosphere. I proclaim it this morning. Proclaim it. Speak it. Announce it. Make a public announcement on this morning and inform everybody that I will no longer allow you to be over me, but I will allow God in the spirit to guide me because there are people that you allow to be over you and their intentions are wrong and that energy and that spirit that that they carry with them it will pull you and it will drag you into a place that a child of God should not be because whom the son has set free the Bible said we are free indeed uh, the Bible said that I have the spirit of God indwelling in me that I no longer have to be a servant unto sin that in, in that in Christ died unto sin once uh, that mean that I can die unto sin once uh, to live eternal with Christ Jesus I don't have to serve sin no more because the power of the Holy Ghost that's in me I proclaim it this morning that I will no longer be a victim uh, of my broken emotions. Uh, I will no longer be a victim uh, of my broken childhood. Uh, I will no longer be a victim uh, of my broken marriage. Uh, but I am an overcomer. Uh, I am a conqueror through Christ Jesus. Uh, I am a child uh, of the Most High God. Uh, and today is Father's Day. Uh, and I am a child uh, of the greatest father who walked the seashores of Galilee. I am a child of the greatest father who ever walked the face of this earth. So I am new on this morning and I proclaim it. My future, I speak over my future on this morning because the Bible said that if any man be in Christ Jesus, he is a new creature. Which means my tomorrow will be better because I am a new creature today. Old things that used to, that used to haunt me. I, I didn't want to wake up to, to, to tomorrow because every day seemed to be dark. I don't want to wake up to tomorrow because there is no hope in tomorrow. But because I found Christ Jesus Old things have passed away and my tomorrow, it looks a little bit brighter. So I'm encouraged to wake up on tomorrow to see what tomorrow will be. Because Christ Jesus, he's there on my tomorrow. And these old feelings, these old emotions that used to hold me down, that used to make me want to leave this world. Sometimes I even wanted to commit suicide. Suicide. Sometimes uh, I wanted to leave my family uh, and abandon my children, uh, but all things uh, are passed away uh, because as I look on the horizon, uh, I see my Savior uh, and it's drawing now uh, closer unto me. Uh, so it encourages me uh, to hold on uh, to God's unchanging hand. Uh, to see what the end's going to be. My footsteps. My footsteps are going in a different direction now. Because I am a new creature in Christ Jesus. I don't travel in the places that I once traveled. I'm not found in places that a new creature should be found in. I'm finding new places to take my new mind and my new spirit. I'm not going 
to those people who have death on their tongues no more. I'm not sitting in that conversation that's not speaking righteousness over the children of God. I'm not listening to no more of the foolishness that persuaded me to talk foolish out of my mouth. But I'm going to keep my mind stayed on Jesus. I'm going to keep pressing to touch the hem of his garment. I'm going to keep looking towards the hills from whence cometh my help. I'm going to look past the tribulation that's all around me. I'm going to press towards a higher calling in Christ Jesus because I understand that God has given me the power over my atmosphere. And if anything come into my atmosphere that does any harm to me, it's because I let it in. God has given me the key to God myself even from myself uh, so sometimes uh, you gotta lock the door on yourself uh, because yourself we get but we begin to speak against uh, the future that God has put before you uh, sometimes uh, yourself will tell you uh, that your mind are playing tricks on you uh, sometimes uh, yourself will guide your footsteps in the places uh, that you know the new creature you ought not to be uh, but I'm going to lock the door on self this morning uh, and I'm going to wait on Jesus uh, I'm going to remain in Christ Jesus uh, I'm going to stay at the right hand of the Father uh, in Christ Jesus uh, and I'm not going to move uh, till God tell me to move uh, I'm going to do good uh, with the time that I have on this side of glory uh, while I'm yet uh, in this tabernacle I will, I will, I will, I will exalt the name of Jesus because I understand that there's power in the name of Jesus. There's healing in the name of Jesus. There's strength in the name of Jesus. I am strong with Jesus on my side and I proclaim that on this morning I speak it all things are of God who have reconciled us to himself by Jesus I can proclaim it because God did it I can profess it because God did it anything that God has done for you you can proclaim it and you can stand on it because it is true and it is sure. And he has given us the ministry of reconciliation, which means I don't have to worry about myself no more as long as I'm in Christ Jesus. I can do the work of an evangelist. I can do the work of an ambassador. I can tell somebody that the Lord is good, that his truth endures through all generations. I could tell somebody that he that dwelleth under the secret place of the Most High God. I could tell somebody that the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I could tell somebody. I was glad when they said unto me. Uh, that we're going into the house of the Lord. I could tell somebody. Uh, that Jesus walked the seashores of Galilee. Uh, he even gave sight to the blind. I could tell somebody. Uh, that Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. Uh, and he did not only raise Lazarus. Uh, 
but he raised me too from the dead because I was I say I was I was dead one day but Jesus came unto me and he woke me up from the dead he gave me a new spirit he gave me a new countenance he gave me a new tongue that I will exalt I will use my new tongue to exalt Jesus Christ to tell the world that it is only Jesus that this feeling that I feel the excitement that I feel the way you see me now the joy that's in my spirit is only because of Jesus it is Jesus all day it's Jesus all night it's Jesus that gives me this joy it's Jesus that makes me feel the way that I feel it's Jesus and nobody else people people desire the gifts people desire the excitement people desire the joy but the joy is in Jesus just find Jesus and you'll get this joy this unspeakable joy just get Jesus and you'll get this strength this unspeakable strength get just get Jesus and you'll get this love this agape love just get Jesus and you'll be strong in the power of his might just get Jesus and you'll find yourself having meekness and kindness just get Jesus and you'll feel the spirit in you change just get Jesus and tomorrow will have hope in it because the hope is in Jesus just get Jesus and everything else will be all right he said to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself not putting your trespasses on you I want you to go to Exodus 3 Exodus chapter 3 God here was preparing Israel for their deliverance God is preparing somebody right now for their deliverance somebody is about to come out on this morning Somebody is about to be delivered on this morning. You don't even know it and you don't even feel it. But God is preparing your heart. God is setting the atmosphere for you to come out, for you to be a new creature in Christ Jesus. God told Moses, uh, you go to my people uh, in verse 7. Uh, he said, and the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt. Uh, how many of you know on this morning uh, that God, uh, he knows the affliction of your heart. Uh, you haven't been in this all by yourself. Uh, God has seen every tear that have fallen down your face uh, and have heard their cry uh, by reason of their taskmasters. Uh, for I know their sorrows, uh, those who have walked all over you. Uh, you have given them all you got. Uh, you have given them the last of your spirit and your soul. Uh, and your heart is broken. Uh, God said to tell you on this morning uh, that I heard your cry. I seen your tears. Uh, and I know the sacrifice that you made. Uh, but I want you to hold up. 
Uh, don't hold it against them uh, because vengeance belongs to me. Uh, I've even heard uh, the whispers behind your back. Uh, I even heard the lies that they spoke against you. Uh, but I will surely uh, devour the tongue of the wicked that speak lies uh, against the children of God. Uh, I surely will deliver you uh, out of the hands of your oppressor. God told Moses, uh, you tell my people uh, that I am have sent you, uh, that I'm about to bring deliverance with me. Uh, somebody uh, is about to be delivered on this morning. Uh, if you could just find Jesus on this morning, uh, let go uh, of your past uh, and look unto the hills uh, from whence cometh your help, cause your help coming from the Lord. Uh, say, God, I'm sorry. Uh, give me Jesus. Uh, God, I'm sorry. Give me Jesus. He told Moses to tell his people, I am come down to deliver them out of the hands of the Egyptians. God have come this morning personally cross these airways to deliver you from the broken heart. He's came down through these airways to mend your broken heart. God has come down through these airways to give peace on the troubled mind. God has come down this morning. He came down through Moses over 2,000 years ago. He's come down on this Father's Day through Bishop Michael McCullough to tell you I've heard your cry I've even seen your sorrow but I've come to heal your mind on this morning I came to give you a new direction I came to brighten your future I came to change the intent of your heart and turn it back to Jesus I came to give you new life through my son Jesus Christ I've been with you even when your dark days was before you uh, I've never left uh, I've never forsaken you uh, I've been with you uh, I will be with you uh, even to the end of the world uh, somebody this morning uh, God is speaking to you uh, and he's saying to turn from your wicked ways uh, and turn towards Jesus Christ uh, the only begotten of the Father uh, the one who died for you uh, who gave his life uh, he became a ransom for you. He was the only begotten of the Father. He was a sheep that went to the slaughter. He was sacrificed for you that you would have a new mind. That this mind that was in Christ Jesus, that it would also be able to be in you. That you could be a new creature. That you would have the power to pass away and crucify the old man and his deeds. Uh, that you would be able to proclaim on this morning to make a public announcement on this morning that I am uh, a child of the most high God uh, I will not uh, be defeated in my mind uh, I will not uh, serve sin no more but I will I will I will Come on and get that in your spirit. I will. I will. Proclaim it on this morning. I will. 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 I will be a new creature in Christ Jesus. If you don't know Jesus in the pardon of your sin on this morning, I give you Jesus on this morning. Jesus has come this morning to change your mind, to heal your heart, to give you a new life. He has come to change the bad intentions that you would have new intentions that you wouldn't desire to sin against God. He has come to give you a bright future on tomorrow and a new destination which is in Christ Jesus while you're still yet living in this body. 
He's come to guide your footsteps. You don't know where to go. But he said that I would guide your footsteps into all paths of righteousness. So wherever you go, you can be assured that the Lord has something to do with where you are in your life. Even, there, even on your dark days, you can know that the Lord has predetermined that I would be in this space. And he said he would never leave me nor forsake me. How good of a feeling is that to know when you feel alone that the Lord is there. That you can call on the name of Jesus. I want you to pray this prayer with me if you don't know Jesus. In the pardon of your sin. If you once knew Jesus and you're not doing the things that you desire to do. You're not living a righteous life, but you desire to live a righteous life. I want you to know that the Lord, he has heard all of your cries. He know your affliction. He know the sorrow of your heart. The Lord even is close to your brokenness. The disparities that's in your life, God is even close to there. Sometimes you feel like you're not adequate. God has made you adequate through Christ Jesus. Some of us, we don't speak, we don't move, we don't say anything because of the education that we lack. But how many of you know that Moses was concerned about his education and God said, I will speak for you. Some of us are afraid to go on job interviews and to go out and follow our dreams in life because of the lack of education. But how many of you know that the Lord thy God, he makes the difference in your life. Some of us work on jobs and we feel like we can't do certain things and we can't live certain places and we would never be able to do certain things because of our income. But how many you know that God is greater than your income and God can make the difference in your life? How many you know that God will take you places to speak into, into ears that you never thought you would be able to speak in? This is the change that comes with the Lord. You become a mouthpiece, an ambassador. An ambassador is one who speaks on behalf of. He or she represents. We are ambassadors of heaven. The Apostle Paul said to the church at Ephesus in, sec in, 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 in Ephesians 2 and 19, he said, Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. You are somebody. You are no longer a stranger. We are fellow citizens of the kingdom of God. I want you to pray this prayer, Lord Jesus, please forgive me of all of my sins. Come into my life, Lord, and save me from my sins. I accept you, Lord, as my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, you just accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. And according to the scriptures, you are now a child of God. Everybody that say that they are a child of God is not a child of God. Everybody is a creation of God. Every living being is a creation. Every living beast is a creation, but everyone is not a child. You have some children of Satan and you have some children of God. But both Satan and God, 
was all created by God. But I want to be a child of God. I want to be a child of the Most High. I want to be counted in the number. I want to see my name written on the Lamb's Book of Life. I want to see Jesus. I want to see him as he is. I want to be caught up to meet him. I want to bless you on this week with God's presence. I want you to know that God's presence is with you on this week. I want you to continue to pray with me for the church in the state of America. I want you to right now go to our description. I want you to go to our cash app. I want you to send a seed to the church. I want you to go to PayPal and send a seed to PayPal. I thank everyone who sows seeds into my Christian school. One day, I know that God is going to allow me to take this Christian school public. And I'm going to be able to help children all over this city to be able to encourage, enlighten, and train new babies in Christ Jesus. I want to thank every last one of y'all for every seed in its infancy stages. God is doing great things. I want you to continue to pray for Maranatha Christian School. Pray for me as I pray for you. God bless you on this week. I know last week we missed the bishop's desk, but we're coming back on this week. Satan thought that we weren't going to be able to get the bishop's desk out, but we're going to get it out. I know you sisters are eager to hear what the word have to say to the husbands, but I pray that you have taken the word, you have eaten the word from the bishop's desk, you have digested the word from the bishop's desk, and today you are a new woman and you are a better wife because of the word of God. We're going to deal with the husbands on next week. Bishop McCullough, love you. I pray that you have a great week. I pray that heaven smile upon you. And again, happy Father's Day to every father. God bless you. We love you in Jesus' name. Have a great week.